Okay, so I hope you're ready for another edition, another instalment of Bread and Circus, because it's not like anything else of circumstances happening in the world, you know, wars in the papers today. There's nothing going on, is there? It's just Prince Harry. That is it. That's the thing. Focus on the thing, right? Maybe this is all part of a plan. Maybe it's all like part of a plan. So unless you've been living under a rock or, you know, one of those war-torn countries where your family and friends are getting blown to shreds every day, then you should know that the most important story in the world right now is that traitor bitch, Prince Harry, who's trying to bring down the British royal family. And we're not having it, are we? Right? Right. So in today's video, I'm going to take a look at not one, but two attempts by Prince Harry yesterday on Sunday to bring down the British royal family. He tried to incite an erection, an insurrection. That's right. I'm going to be having a look at some of the highlights of the interview with Anderson Cooper on 60 Minutes and the other one he did on ITV with that other guy that were no less than an attempt to usurp King Charles III and overthrow the British monarchy. Yes, that's right. Prince Harry is an insurrectionist. But unfortunately for Harry, he lacks the revolutionary charisma required to bring down such an institution with his glazed-eyed expression, his quivering voice and his bum-fluff beard. He's suffering from insurrectile dysfunction. It's not that he can't get it up, it's that he can't bring it down. <laughs> anyway, so there's quite a lot to unpack here, so if uh, you want me to get on with the video, you know, you want me to have a look at the clips from this uh, interview, uh, then, uh, then you're going to have to give this video a like right now. And if you are watching one of my videos yet again, and you still haven't subscribed, you are also an insurrectionist. You are a traitor bitch like Harry, right? Because you're either with me or against me. All right? All right, let's get into it. You, you didn't believe she was dead? For a, long, for a long time. I just refused to accept that she was, she was gone. Um, part of, you know, she would never do this to us, but also part of maybe this is all part of a plan. I mean, you, you really believe that maybe she had just decided to disappear for a time? For a time, and then that she would call us and we would go and join her. Now, I'm sure to some people that, that this kind of thing that he's saying here, this um, emotional pornography, is going to uh, elicit a response. You know, people are going to feel sorry for him. You know, people have been through similar things. They've lost a parent or, or something. Um, but I, I've got to say, I find it cynical. I find it very cynical when people are constantly talking about their pain. He's 38. This happened when he was 12. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy to lose a parent violently like he did. Um... Suddenly, of course, everyone had sympathy for him at the time. This is something I've said a billion times before, but move on. Sorry, move on. I, I, you know, I couldn't, I'm sorry, I don't care anymore. I, I'm just going to say, it, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I'd feel sorry for you if you didn't whine about it all the time. Do you understand that? This is the thing, the self-pity thing. It's, it's ironic, isn't it, that self-pity elicits less pity from people, I think. Isn't it ironic? <laughs> I'm so insightful. How long did you believe that? Years. Many, many years. And William and I talked about it as well. He had, um, he had similar thoughts. I'm sure he did. As a 15-year-old boy, I'm sure William had similar thoughts about it can't be real. You know, my mum's here one day, then she's not. It's that, you know, you're going to feel that perhaps... Someone's lying to you. It's a strange situation for kids to grow up in, you know, constantly being in the public eye. I, I get all of that. But he was 15. Now he's 40 or whatever he is. And he's moved on. I don't know if he's got over it, if that's the right expression. Do you ever get over something like that? But he doesn't sell it to the world, does he? That's not the thing he does, right? He just gets on with the life that he's been given. You know, the enormous privilege, but also enormous responsibility. And, um, you know, I've got to say, uh, my admiration for William, you know, it's not like I'm a big monarchist or anything. I don't really care that much, but I, I do admire William's, uh, I don't know what you call it, stoicism. The silence. I'm loving the silence from the royal family, the way they're just like, yep, yeah, that's fine. Uh, King Charles, when, he, when, uh, when, when uh, Elizabeth died, sort of... Uh, made that sort of uh, extended that olive branch, as they said to to Harry and Meghan. He even mentioned Meghan in his in his speech after after Queen Elizabeth died. And uh, you, you have to, I think, 
admire at least that outward image that they give, you know, respectable, responsible, don't rise to it, fantastic. That's how you deal with narcissists like these two. You write in the book, you say, I'd often say it to myself first thing in the morning, maybe this is the day. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the day that she's going to mm -hmm. reappear. Yeah, hope. I had huge amounts of hope. He held on to that hope into adulthood. When Harry was 20, he asked to see the police report about the crash that killed his mother, her boyfriend Dodi Al-Fayed, and their driver Henri Paul, while they were being pursued by paparazzi in a Paris tunnel. The files contain photographs of the crash scene. Why did you want to see it? Mainly proof. Proof that she was in the car. Proof that she was injured. And proof that the very paparazzi that chased her into the tunnel were the ones that were taking photographs, photographs of her lying half dead on the back seat of the car. You write, I hadn't been aware before this moment, talking about looking at the pictures of the crash scene, yeah. that the last thing mummy saw on this earth was a flashbulb. Yeah. That's what you saw in the pictures. Mm hmm I don't get me wrong here, but uh, again, I that him talking about his reaction as a kid to his mother's death and how he struggled with it and how he needed to see the police reports and all that, that does elicit some sympathy from me, right? I'm not completely cold-hearted. I say that. <laughs> but um, the thing is, it's, it's not just that. He's not just saying it for that reason alone. He's not just talking about his experiences, is he? He's... Is this some sort of convoluted attempt to equate what happened to his mother, uh, suggest that that was an assassination, and, as, and, 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 and suggest that the press are trying to do the same thing to Megan, this socialite who's done nothing but her entire life, nothing but seek the limelight as an actress, as an ambassador for loads of things, you know, paying to get into charity events, and then just wasn't happy with how she was in the limelight in England, you know, because, um, because you know, you have to go and cut loads of ribbons when we say, no, you can't manage your own Instagram page because bloody hell, you're a member of the royal family now. We do this. We do shit our way. You get all these mansions and stuff, right? You get loads of privileges, but you have to do a few things that we say. So racist. They're racist. We need to go and live in Montecito in a $14 million mansion because... Racism. Now, no, no! You're not going to fool me. I'm not going to be dragged in by your narcissistic bollocks again. Right? You didn't... No! <laughs> it's not. None of that is true. It's, it's, it's this, this attempt to just gaslight you by, by, by playing with your emotions. I lost my mother. I wanted to see the police reports. Oh, that's ha what happened to Megan. That's why we live in, that's why we sold our souls to Netflix and Spotify and Anderson Cooper and spare whoever did that, Random House or whatever, I don't know. That's why we did it, the murderous racist press. Shut up, you liars. Well, they were, the pictures showed the reflection of a group of photographers taking photographs through the window and the reflection of the window was, was them. He only saw some of the crash photos. His private secretary and advisor dissuaded him from looking at the rest. All I saw was the back of my mum's head uh, slumped on the back seat. There were other more gruesome photographs, but I will be eternally grateful to him for denying me the ability to inflict pain on myself by saying that because that's the kind of stuff that sticks in your mind forever. Harry says he believed his mother might still be alive until he was 23 and visited Paris for the first time. You told your driver, I want to go to the tunnel mm -hmm. where my mom died. Yeah. I wanted to see whether it was possible, driving at the speed that Henry Paul was driving, that you could lose control of a car and plow into a pillar, killing almost everybody in that car. I need to take this journey. I need to ride the same route. The same tunnel, the same speed. All of it. Your mother was going. Yep. Again, I don't know, if this story about him taking, <laughs> getting his driver to take him to Paris and drive through the tunnel where Diana died at 100 miles per hour is true. Again, it seems like something intensely private. I mean, each to their own. I've got no reason to doubt any of his stories are true. You know, it's not like he's got a track record of lying about absolutely everything. You know, him and Megan. But anyway, let's assume it's true. Uh, 
it seems like an intensely private, almost mental breakdown. I don't know why you'd want to sell this to people. Unless, you know, your only job was to sell your self-pity to the world. That's the only way you, that's the only thing you've got to monetize. I think that's what it is. I can't, I can't feel sorry for that. Because if you see it and you know about it, maybe it's, it's a sad thing. Someone who can't let go and they want to relive the death of their mother. I don't know. It just, I don't, I don't know how this is helping anyone. I don't know how this is helping Harry or Meghan, like psychologically. It's just getting them rich. It's cynical. I hate it. I'm watching it and I feel embarrassed more than anything else. You know, I also feel very grateful because it's given me loads of content to comment on, you know, like a bottom feeding pun life piece of shit grifter that I am. <laughs> because William and I had already been told the event was like a bicycle chain. If you remove one of those chains, the end result would not have happened. Yeah. To die the way Diana died, it was essential that there was an extremely drunk driver driving at 100 miles an hour through the center of Paris. It's like a chain. <laughs> There's no analogy needed there. That's someone, either it's someone who's genuinely overthinking the death of their mother, which I, I think is believable. And I think that is something he may have gone through. In fact, I don't doubt it. You know, if he's human on any level, yeah, he probably will have thought of all of these things, especially with it happening to him so young. The way you process it is very different to if it happens, at, you know, our age now. But, yeah, that's nonsense, isn't it? Thinking about it. What do you mean it's like a chain? If one little thing didn't happen, then the whole thing's a lie and it's a conspiracy. I, nah. Nah, you're just dragging up. You're just behaving exactly like the tabloids did 25 years ago. Not me, though. I'm a bastion of morals and, uh, and moral grandstanding. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look at a clip from the ITV interview now, uh, in which Harry justifies his writing an autobiography. This should be interesting. I don't want history to repeat itself. I do not want to be a single dad. And I did, certainly don't want my children to have a life without a mother or a father. The relationship between um, certain members of the family and the tabloid press, those certain members have decided to get into bed with the devil right, mm. uh, to, rehabilitate, to, to rehabilitate their image. But the moment that that rehabilitation comes at the detriment of others, me, other members of my family, then that's where I draw the line. Here we go again with the vague insinuations, the nonsense, they got into bed with the devil. What devil, Harry? What are you talking about? Who did what, when and why? Give us details, for God's sake, right? Every single time, I have to say the same thing in every video. It's getting so boring and repetitive. Say something of substance. Every time uh, that, that, that something, what, what do you mean? That, that, what's the suggestion here? That the royal family threw you under the bus? No, the royal family didn't like your wife because she's a difficult woman. She's a narcissist, right? It's nothing else. Now, I'm dealing with a narcissist uh, in my life at the moment, and uh, it's it's really, you know, one of the first things you notice about narcissists is that they don't have any lifelong friends from school or from, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> That's not why I don't. <laughs> I moved countries, <laughs> so it doesn't count. Uh, but you'll notice that they don't, maintain relationships. They're very volatile, very unstable, the relationships. This is what I noticed in my practice as a, no, I, I know. I know, I know I'm not a professional, all right. But you will notice uh, with narcissists, what you'll notice about pathological narcissists is that they don't have long lasting, stable relationships with people because they're dickheads, right? And that is why 
press didn't like your wife, that is why your family didn't like your wife, right? Because she's just a difficult narcissist. That's why she was a 40-something-year-old divorcee. Sorry to all of you 40-something divorcees out there. I know it's not always your fault. It's usually one of the two's fault or both of your faults, right? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but I know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? God, that is it, right? He... Everything is everyone else's fault. No responsibility taken. And now he's just throwing his entire family under the bus, making them sound like racists, intolerant, uh, getting into bed with the devil. What are you talking about? That they wanted to have a good image in the press. Of course Camilla wanted to wash her image. Of course Charles wanted to wash his image. He's the, the, the future king and queen, the now the current king and queen of England. They can't have everyone hating them. You know, of course you've got to make people like you. That's essential. And that doesn't mean they threw you under the bus, Harry. They never did. You were a bit of a prick as a kid. And you did some stupid stuff, got drunk a few times. And yeah, people forgave you for that. Nobody cared. In fact, everyone liked you. They saw you as like uh, a bit of a Jack the Lad. You were very likeable. Until we got to know your personality. <laughs> And your wife just never was. But as long as she kept quiet and she was there and pretty and well-dressed, everyone's like, oh, that's nice. A new American woman in the family, whatever. And because of her terrible personality, everyone turned on her. And that is a pattern with narcissists. It happens throughout their lives. And uh, it's a big red flag if you meet someone in their late 30s and all of their friends... Uh, people they've met in the last, like, 24 months. Big red flag. Believe me. I know someone like that right now. Who shall remain unnamed? <laughs> but, um... Yeah. Yeah. I can spot them a mile off. I don't need Ontario to give me a license. Hey, little reference there to what's going on with Jordan Peterson. Very topical, yeah. You think I can only talk about Harry and Meghan? No, I've got, I've got, I've got, you know, so many things I want to talk about, and these two just keep giving me free content. I'm furious. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna have to leave it there. I think I might. Oh, yeah, well, I'll obviously do a few more videos about this, you know, with the other clips. I might even do another one today. Who knows? God knows. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, comment, all the rest. Thanks for all of your help. Goodbye.